Hello everybody, welcome to Experience Jesus with KVJ, Apostle Victor James. I'm excited and I give thanks to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus for another opportunity he has given to us to be able to fellowship together and break the bread of life together. Now we're having a special um, session in this our breaking of bread. And you and I know that the bread we break is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Bible said in 1 John in chapter 1, he said, our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son. And then Jesus speaking as God man in John chapter 4, he said God is his spirit and he seeks for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. After the death, the burial and resurrection of Jesus from the dead, according to uh, Paul, the apostle in Philippians chapter 3, in verse number 3, Paul said very clearly, he said, we born again Christians are the circumcision that worship God in the spirit and put no confidence at all in the flesh. Now what that suggests is, is that we are the fulfillment of the Father's desire to have spirit worshippers. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now quickly, two announcements. If you haven't purchased my book, how Jesus did it. You got to get this book because it will be a great blessing to you. This book has been said to be uh, a great blessing to so many millions all over the world. Alrighty. And then second announcement. If you haven't, um, somehow, I'm sweating a lot today because, you know, I'm so excited. You know, when I get excited like that, I sweat a lot. All right. Second announcement is that I have loads of teachings on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and type Apostle Victor James. And then please press the subscription button. It will make me glad that you did that. I'll be so glad to know you did that. To press that subscription button in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right. Let's hit the ground running. Um, there is something that is very important to my heart. That I wanted to share with all of us. Even as we go into Christmas. Because we're in Christmas festive season right now. And you know. This season has a reason. The reason for this season is a person. And this person is called the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So this season symbolizes to us believers. Born again Christian. Jesus Christ. You know. His blessedness, his goodness, you know. And so, uh, I want us to look at that, you know, in, in, uh, in totality as, a, as Christian or for Christianity, you know. And I have something written here. I said, let me use my listen real quick. Uh, in, I want to start with the book of Proverbs, you know. Uh, chapter 11, Proverbs 11, verse 24. It says, There is he that scattereth, and yet increaseth. And there is he that will tell it more than his meat, yet it tendeth to poverty. Verse 25 says, The liberal soul shall be made fat, but he that waters himself shall be watered. Now, of course, I know that um, this verse of scripture in the book of Proverbs has been used several times for several, several things. You know, <laughs> please don't mind this, my sweat. I sweat a lot like this. So tonight, I'm just, I mean, this episode, I'm just excited. You know, so I'm going to be myself and sweat all I can. But still get the teaching, still get the message. You know, that's the most important. That Proverbs we read in Proverbs 11, verse 24 and 25. It said, the liberal soul in verse 25, said, the liberal soul shall be made fat. That's what it said. As a matter of fact, let me read it again. You know. It goes on and says in verse 24, he said, There is he that scattered and yet increased, and there is he that we told them more that it is meat, and it tended to poverty. Verse 25 says, The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watered himself shall be watered also. Now, like I said, these two verses of this uh, scripture in Proverbs chapter 11 have been so used on several occasions to bring out several points, but the reason for it in this episode is that it symbolizes or shows what Christianity truly is all about. You see, Christianity was founded purely on giving. That's what Christianity is. That's what 
Christmas is. That's what Christianity is all about. It's a reminder of the benefit of giving, the blessing of giving. You know? The Bible said there is one that we told more than it is necessary. It will just result into nothingness for the person. Imagine God withholding from mankind, the Lord Jesus Christ, up until now. It will have earned him nobody. Of course, he could create another set of human beings. But it will have not, God will not have gained us. That's what Christmas is. That's what giving is all about. Are you seeing that? It's very important, very powerful. As a matter of fact, in... Uh, uh, in, 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 in John chapter 3 verse 16, he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Anybody who believes in Jesus Christ should not perish, but have eternal life. Now, the reason that was possible is because God was willing to give. Are you seeing that? So, God giving made him to gain you and I. You know, that's why Proverbs said, anybody that we told more than it is necessary at a for a particular purpose, for a particular, quote-unquote, good reason, it would end up in want for the person, as lack for that person. Imagine God lacking us. <laughs> you know what I mean? God would have lacked us. I mean, we would have all gone to hell and it would have profited, profited him nothing. And then he had to create another human being again, another set of beings again. You see? But no, he gave so as to receive us. You, you see, so Christianity is uh, basically founded on the principle, the grace of giving. That's what Christianity is founded upon. The grace of giving. So, you and I know that with this truth, of course, there's a general knowledge that giving is living. Anybody who stops giving eventually starts dying. You know? Giving is living. You have to be a receiver and a giver for you to stay alive. Nobody stays alive without giving. It never works. I mean, you take in as a human being, but you'll have to pass out something at some point. Otherwise, you stop living. Giving is living. You know, so Christianity is a product of God's giving. God allowing what he has to pass from him for the betterment of mankind. You know, I wrote here, I said, Christianity is founded on giving. Without God giving, there will be nothing called Christianity. I said, so therefore, Christianity, giving is all about Christianity. That's why, if you want to know a set of people who are the most, who are better givers, they should be Christians. They should be Christians. Because it was giving that brought us into the family of God. Giving brought us into the family of God. Giving. We don't withhold. Because it will lead to the scarcity, the want of some things. Remember, there is one that withholded more than it is necessary. The Bible says it led to want, to poverty, to lack. So if God had not given Jesus, it would have led to his own lack of us. Now it doesn't mean that without us, God cannot survive. I don't know if you get that. God can survive without us. I mean, God is self-fulfilling. He, he has no lack. But for him to enjoy us, he has to have us. And for him to have us, he has to give. So God gave his only son so as to get sons. No wonder the Bible said in 1 Corinthians in chapter 1 in verse 9. He said God called us to the fellowship, the koinonium, the intermingling, the intimacy of his son. Are you seeing that? Thank God that God is a giver. Thank God that Christianity, you know, is a product of God's giving. All right. So here, I, 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 I wrote here, I said everyone who comes into Christ and becomes a Christian, 
he or she is encouraged scripturally to be a giver. Once you become born again, one of the truths of the scripture that we are encouraged about is that you should live a giving life. You should be a giver. Otherwise, you are not born again yet. Uh, somebody said, no, that's, that's not true. That's works. Christianity, remember, is a product of giving. It's a product of giving. And the sustenance of Christianity is rooted in receiving and giving. Receiving and giving. Watch this. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. Look at Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. The Bible said, as we therefore have opportunity... Let us do good. Let us give. As a Christian, every time you have opportunity, every time there's a need, every time there's a reason to give, don't shy away. That's what he said. Don't shy away from it. He said, let us do good. Be part of it. Do good. Let it, let it be something that goes from you. Something that comes out from you. Galatians chapter 6 verse 10. I'm going to read it again. He said, as we therefore have opportunity, as we have opportunity therefore, let us good, do good. He, hear this. To all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. That's how to be a Christian. That's how to be somebody who appreciates the sacrifice of Jesus and that you have come into the life of God and that you understand what Christianity and Christmas is all about giving god says as a child of god at every point at every point it didn't say at some point it didn't say when you feel like it it didn't say when it is when it looks right for you he said at every time an opportunity shows up to give god said you should do it do it do it because this is who you are you, that is the product of who, of who you are. Of what you are. A giver. You are the product of God's giving. God refused to withhold. So that he can have us. So God's giving is what we were born of. We were born of God's act of giving. We were made Christian. We became Christians. Children of God. By that singular act of God as a giver. Don't we told this glorious period of Christmas, this glorious period where we are celebrating and rejoicing about the things that God has done for us in Christ Jesus, everybody should give. Glory be to God in heaven. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Bible, even Jesus. Even Jesus himself, who is the gift of God, the demonstration of God's giving goodness for the redemption of mankind. In Acts chapter 10, the Bible said in verse 38, in Acts 10, 38, very clearly, he said how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And guess what? Who went about doing good? Even Jesus, as soon as he became empowered by God, it, was, it came natural for Jesus Christ. As soon as Jesus became empowered by God, by the Holy Ghost, the Bible said immediately he went about doing good. He didn't hold what God had given to him. And the more good Jesus did, the better he gets. The better Jesus got. The better Jesus got. The more good he did, the better he got. I believe that every time Jesus went out to do good, the anointing upon him became more gracious. I mean, that's my personal belief. The anointing on Jesus' life, upon Jesus, his humanity, became more gracious, more glorious. Because whatever you have, that you are not exercising yourself in allowing it to pass from you to others, begins to diminish, begins to reduce, begins to become unprofitable to others and eventually to you. 
and you will eventually lose it. So, the more Jesus did good, the better the anointing on him got. The more good Jesus did, the better the anointing on Jesus got. So, you and I need to learn to exercise ourselves in doing good. So, the Bible said in Galatians we read before, he said, as much as we have opportunity, do good. Don't we told from people. Do good. So, it's not just Jesus who was expected to good, do good because he was anointed by the Father. Because the, God himself, it was his goodness that brought forth Christianity. Remember, I've been saying that since. And now Jesus came to give us an example. He himself, as soon as he received of God, he went doing good. Wow. What of you and I? In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. The book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. Look at what it says. It says, for you are his workmanship. We are God's masterpiece. We were created by God in Christ Jesus. Watch this. Unto good works. We were created for good works. We were created to do good. Not to withhold good. Not to do bad. Are you seeing that? Do good. Amanayada. You know, when I see the way some Christians pray, you know, destructive prayer, bad prayer, wishing somebody evil, you know, you will wonder if they really understood what Christianity was all about. Everybody, once you are born again, you say you are born again unto good works. Guess that good word. What does good? He said, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. These good works, God had prepared them that we will be exercise, we will exercise, we will be exercised in those works. So you see, sometimes when you meet somebody on the road who is a beggar, I'm not talking about everybody, I'm just using that as an example. You know, such people sometimes, you know, is God. God knew that you will meet them before you ever became born again. So, he empowered you with his goodness. So that those are the things you will exercise yourself in. While on earth. And then you will be rewarded for doing that. <laughs> this God is too much. So, it is not only God who is good. It is not only Jesus who is good. You and I, born again Christian, we are also good. We are created unto good works. So, let me summarize that. Christianity started on good works on good, giving the goodness of God because God gave it, is, it was God's giving that brought forth Christianity and for us to know that this is not only just God who is good Jesus is the character of God as Jesus came forth and received of God, the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost, the Bible said he went about doing good, went about doing good and the more good Jesus did, the better the anointing on his life became the greater the anointing became and so it is not just the father it's not just jesus you and i were created Woo! glory be to god unto good works are you getting that in christ jesus and he said those works those good works god set them before we came before we got born again before we came along glory be to god so watch this watch this now <laughs> this is this is getting interesting. So, God is not just good. Jesus is not just good. Born again Christians are good. Because we have the nature of God. We have the nature of God. Jesus came as God's character. We, we have the nature of God. Are you seeing that? So, to do good, it's not a struggle for us. It's our nature. It's our nature. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10. I got to read this real quick. He said, for God is not unrighteous to forget your works and labor of love which you have shown towards his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. So every time you actually do good that God himself created you to be a good person to do. Are you getting that? The Bible said God marks it down. He doesn't forget it. He doesn't forget it. Especially when that good you are doing is not convenient. Especially when that good you are doing 
the person or the people to which you were sent to do those good, good or given opportunity to do those good to, do not qualify for it. The Bible said God never forgets it. It doesn't forget. I need to read it again. In Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10. This is very serious. Watch this. He said, for God is not unrighteous. God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. He's not unrighteous. He said, which you have shown towards his name. That means the reason you are doing it is because of God. Because of Jesus. He said, because of Jesus, I'm going to, give, I'm going to do the good to these people. Because of Jesus, I'm going to do good to this person. Because of Jesus, I don't care whatever this people have done. Just because of Jesus, I'm going. He said, God does not forget it. He never goes past God. That kind of kindness and goodness never goes past God. God never forgets. So, if you understand that, you will see that to do good is a thing of joy. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 8, he said, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man do it, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether bond or free. Any good you do, God will record it for you and make it to come back to you at a good time, at an acceptable time, at a time where you need it. A family may not be able to do good Christmas this year and you are able to share a cup of rice with them. Share it with them. God will not allow that good that you have done to pass by him. No, he will retain it, keep it in his, in his own memory for you as at the time that you have need of a good. It might not be a cup of rice you need, but whatever it is that you will ever need, God will play it back for you. Are you seeing that? Glory be to God in heaven. Ah, da, ba, da, da. This is why we do good. We do good not because it's a commandment. No, it's because it's our nature. It's what we inherited from Christ. Doing good is what we inherited from Christ. You don't have to have so much. That little you have, share it with somebody. You have three shirts. Why don't you share one? You have five skirts. Why don't you share, give out one or two, or two skirts? Are you seeing what I'm saying? Whatever it is you have, every time an opportunity shows up for you to do good. Don't be told. Don't stop yourself from doing it. Because such things, the Bible said God will repay. That's what it said in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 8, that we read. I got to read it again. The book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 8. Watch this. He said, knowing that uh, whatsoever good, anything, whatsoever good thing, rather, any man do it, Whatsoever good thing any man do it, the same, the same, the same good shall he receive of the Lord. Whether he's a born man or a free woman or free man, it doesn't matter. Whatever good you you give yourself to do, the Bible said God will not forget. Number two, He will make sure you get it back. He will make sure you get it. If you have five cars in your compound you have ten cars and there is a brother or sister that doesn't even have a car at all why don't you give out one you see there's a, a, a joy there's a, a, a joy feeling that follows givers you know for years I, I remember many years ago Oh, my time is fast spent. I, I got to rush this. I remember years ago, every time I had the opportunity to give something or do good to somebody, the kind of joy that I get inside of me is it, unquantifiable. You, you couldn't explain it. It was on many years later, later in my life, as I studied the word of God, God helped me to understand what was going on. You know, the Lord said to me one day, every time you give, yeah. you are fulfilling purpose according to divine calling you are fulfilling purpose so when you give purpose is fulfilled according to divine calling you see that's why you have that joy the witness of the spirit is a witness of the spirit 
a fulfillment. So giving brings fulfillment. Try it. Every time you give, you part with something. You show yourself as good. You exercise yourself in goodness. You, you, you. The joy of fulfillment is what you have inside. You, you, you know, it, it's, it's amazing. When you give, something has left you. As you know, talk, thinking as a human, it's like a minus. You know, let's say I have twenty dollars. You know, and I gave you ten dollars out of my twenty dollars. I don't even know that's a minus. It's a minus according to the world. You know, the world and human thinking, human sense. You know, I'm short of 10. From my 20, I've given you 10. So I'm left with only 10. So it's a minus. But actually in the spirit, in Christ, as a child of God, is a fulfilled destiny. It's a fulfilled, it's a, it's a fulfilled purpose. Divine purpose. So you see, the kind of joy you get, you know, it is it's unspeakable, inexplainable. You can't explain it. Because there's something that is bound for you in the spirit with God. And it awaits you receiving it again. Ah, yeah. If you understand this, to do good, to give, will become a thing of joy. Don't follow the world complaining, eh, they are trying, telling you to give, they're just collecting your money. You know, that's why the Bible said God loves a cheerful giver. It's not that He loves a cheerful giver because He wants you to give smiling. We have to take. <laughs> take. <laughs> no, no, no. That's not what God meant by a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver because that cheerful giver has understanding of purpose being fulfilled. A divine call is being fulfilled. You were created to do good. Don't you get it? So every time you actually do good, you are fulfilling divine purpose. You are fulfilling divine call. Glory be to God. We don't give just because it is time to give. No, we give because we are created for it. He said, this is what we are created to do. So when we actually do it, we are fulfilling purpose. Are you getting this thing? This is very serious. So, so let's run along. So the Bible now says in Galatians chapter 6 verse 9, NLT translation. Look at what the scripture says. In Galatians chapter 6 verse 9, the NLT translation. It says, so let, it says, so let's not get tired of doing good. With this understanding, don't get tired of doing good. With this understanding you have now, don't get, don't, don't get tired of it. He said, let's not get tired of doing good. At just the right time, we will reap the harvest of blessing if we do not give up. Don't get tired of it. Don't, don't, don't. Look, I know that there are some people you do good that will pay you back with evil. I've done, my wife and I, myself, I've done a lot of people good. You know, I've helped people to go to school, university stood with people until they got married you know but eventually what happened they turned their back on me and walked away you know look i i was there was a time i was thinking even if i had offended you even if i had done you wrong you should remember all the times i stood with you you, you understand what i'm saying to stand by me back you know but i told myself after a while I will not allow anybody paying me with evil for the good I've done to deter me or to wear me out or to get me to become tired of doing good. Don't get tired. That's what our scripture says. In Galatians chapter 6 verse 9, NLT translation. He said, so let's not get tired of doing what is good. Don't get tired of doing it. Keep doing it. Continue. It's a personal, make it a personal choice for you. Make it God's calling for you. Realize that it's a purpose. It's a divine call. It's a divine purpose. Are you seeing what I'm saying? It's a divine assignment. And nobody's going to stay alive forever. So while you have opportunity to be alive right now, fulfill your own divine call.
Fulfill your own divine assignment. Fulfill your own divine purpose for you in Christ Jesus. Do good. Go all out to do good. Let doing good for you be as though you are you know, taking in oxygen. You never come to a point where it stops. Are you getting it? This is serious. This is serious. Our God is a giving God. He's a good God. He never withholds. told. That's why Christianity was birthed. Jesus came forth as God's character to show us God in his character. Full character. As soon as Jesus received from God, he went about doing good. And the Bible said, we ourselves, we were created in Christ Jesus unto good works. So, where do you have, don't do good anymore? It doesn't exist for a born again Christian. Glory be to God. So, he said, as much as there is opportunity, do it. Every time opportunity comes up, do it. Because God will never forget the good you do, you did. He will never forget. There is no good you have ever done in the past that God has ever forgotten. In this life or in the world to come. Never. So don't let anybody deter you from doing good. Don't let anybody. Don't let anybody discourage you from doing good. Go all out. This is your nature. This is your life. This is your calling. Especially this Christmas season. Go all out to do good. Every time you are going out. Take some money in your hand. Maybe like 500 or 1,000 naira extra. Change it into 200 naira. Somebody may meet you on the road and just ask for 100 naira or 200 naira. Share it with them. Give it to them. Are you seeing what I'm saying? You are created to good, do good. You are created to do good. This is your calling. It's a purpose, divine purpose for your life to do good. Do good to your husband. Do good to your wife. Do good to your father. Do good to your mother. Do good to your parents, your children. Do good to your neighbors. Stop fighting and accusing everybody. Stop it. Get over it. It's time to do good. You were created to be good and to do good. Do it. Don't let anybody stop you. This is not the time for it. Use this Christmas season to reappraise God's purpose for your life in doing good. If you have not been doing it, please, I beg you, get back into it. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Husband and wife, forgive yourself. Go out. Go out. Show each other good. Regardless of the mistakes each other have made. Regardless of the rumors, words, things that have been told each other. Do go out and do good. I'm not making sense to somebody here. Do a bit of God. Look, where, where, whatever church you are going, whatever it is that your pastor has done wrong, look beyond this wrong. Do good to your pastor. Be kind to him. Be good to your pastor. Look, before now, you were... You have your shortcomings, but your pastor stayed with you. He fed you with the word of God. Faithfully kept teaching you the truth of God's word. Now that he needs you, don't turn your back. Do good to him. Do good. Go back and do good to your pastor. Be good to him. Buy him gift. Do something good. Let me show you something very important. Like some of us here, you know, some of, some, some of all, you know, even you that is listening to this teaching right now, for maybe for a year, two years, or three years, we've been I've been coming across to you, Apostle Victor James. Every I've been coming across to you every three times a week. Imagine that three times a week, and there's four or five weeks in a month sometimes. So sometimes fifteen times in a week. I mean in a month. I we keep bringing you teachings, teachings that will help you, that will galvanize your life aright, stabilize you, help you to live about fear. Help you to live an overcoming life. Help you to rest in the finished work of Jesus Christ. You know, at some point, whatever it takes, share what you have with us. You know, I expect that some of you will just say, look, ABJ, Apostle Victor James, I'm going to send XYZ to you for Christmas. It, it is not a sin. It, it's not wrong. I'm telling you. It is not wrong. Don't let anybody tell you, don't mind all these uh, pastors. Don't mind all these men of God. They're just looking for something to eat. They're just looking for money. They're just looking for what to get. I don't care what anybody else is saying. You are not everybody else. You should understand. You were created to do good. Every time you do good, you are doing it for as a fulfillment of divine purpose that to which you were created. Let me show. Let me share a scripture with you. Glory be to God. 
Let me show you. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. NIV translation. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. Watch what the Bible says. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. He said, the elders who direct the affairs of the church well are worthy of double honor, especially those who work, whose work is preaching and teaching. That means anybody who actually is preaching and teaching the word of God and is not mixing it with games, gimmicks, just to collect things from you, to deceive people. You know, that's my calling. That's what I'm called to do as Apostle Victor James. Look, I'm, the Lord said to me, he said, I was going to stop, you know, doing all this preaching and teaching and then just face my local constituents, you know. But the Lord said to me, he said, don't stop. Don't stop because I'm going to bring them from all over the world to hear you. And these teachings were getting resolved, testimonies from all over the world. How our teachings are a blessing to people. Millions of millions of people all over the world. In America, in Canada, in Australia, Qatar, Dubai, Turkey, in London, in Europe, in South Africa, in, in the rest of all over the world. Now, the Bible said the one who is preaching and teaching good very well is worthy of double honor. That means whatever honor you can give your president, whatever honor you can give your governor, whatever honor you can give the king of your town, village, or community, you should give double of that honor to the man or woman who is preaching and teaching the word of God accurately. Are you seeing that? Now, watch this. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 6, ESV translation, the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 6. He said, let the one who is taught the word of God. I'm reading Bible. That's it. Galatians, chapter 6, verse 6. Take your Bible. It's there. You will see it. He said, let the one who is taught the word of God share all good things with the one who teaches. He said, the person that is taught God's word, you know, Let's even say it is four weeks in a month and three times, non-stop. That means 12 times every month we keep bringing you teachings upon teachings. Teachings to help to bring rest to your heart. To help to bring rest to your soul. Genuine, unadulterated teachings of God's word. You will never find in any one of my teachings where I, I am talking about myself where I am promoting myself, or I am talking about the things I have and, and don't have, where I am talking about how great a man of God I am, how powerful, how heavily anointed. No, 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 I don't have time for that. He didn't send me that. You will never hear me say that. Instead of me to start doing that, I'd rather die. My assignment is to teach about Jesus Christ. My assignment is to make Jesus known. I become less, that he may increase all the time. That he may increase. My joy is that Jesus is known. My fulfillment, the gladness of my heart is that somebody has come to know about Jesus, not about me. You see, so the Bible now said, now we who are doing such, who are preaching and teaching such, the Bible said, you should share your good things with us. Like this Christmas period. You know, take our Zenith Bank account. Send me a, a, a Christmas offering. Christmas gift. And so I say, Apostle is begging us for money. Please forget such persons. Move away from such person. Such person is not talking about the Spirit of God. Such person is, in, is, is mobilized by demonic influence, demonic actions. Look away from such person. This is the scripture. This is the truth. The Bible said, let the one who is taught in the word share all good things. With the one who teaches the word. Who is teaching him the word. Now, i got to show you one more. In, in first, uh, 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 first Timothy chapter 5, verse 18. It says, For the scripture said, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that tread out the corn. He said, The laborer is worthy of his wages. So whatever gift you send to me right now for Christmas, it's not wrong. I'm telling you. Jesus is going to record it for you. You see, every time we have brought you teachings, words to stabilize you to help you in life jesus is recording it he's keeping account of it he's keeping it that we are doing good to the body of christ all over the world you know some people go to church every sunday every weekday service 
the messages they are hearing is what they have not done. That's why God has not answered them. There's something they have not done. That's why God has not moved on their behalf. But the Bible, by the help of the Holy Ghost, God has helped us by the help of the Holy Spirit to bring you teachings about what Jesus has done. That life, Christianity is not about what you have not done. It's about what Jesus himself has done as our Lord and Savior. To bring rest to the soul of God's people from all over the world. Let the Lord use you to help us to be encouraged. That's what the Bible says. Do not muzzle the ox that trail out the corn. Now watch this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, in verse 13 to 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 13 to 14. The Bible said, do you realize that those who walk in the temple get their meals from the offerings brought to the temple? Do you realize that those who walk in the temple they get their meals from the offerings that are brought to the temple. Are you seeing that? Next verse. He said, and those who serve, and those who serve at the altar get a share of the sacrificial offering. Verse 14 says, in the same way, the Lord ordered that those who preach the gospel, the good news, should be supported by those who benefit from it. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 14. It's in your Bible. Check your Bible, it's there. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 14. I'm going to read it again. In the same way, the Lord ordered that those who preach the gospel, the good news, should be supported by those who benefit from that, those teachings, those preachings. Let me ask you, everybody, wherever you are, I'm going to be bold at this. I'm going to be bold. Christmas is just next weekend. A week from now is Christmas. I'm going to be bold to ask you. I'm going to ask you to send us an offer. I have men and women working with me. They are the ones helping me to make these things. You, you know, uh, The ones at the sound. The ones at the uh, video. The ones at the lighting. You know, the light. The ones at the setting up of the studio that I have to use, you know. I have people doing all kinds of things to help me to make this thing work. And these, these are people that have wives and families. So you see, <laughs> whatever you send, you bless me with, you are not just blessing me with it. You are sharing, we're sharing it with so many others. Are you seeing what I'm saying? So I'm going to be bold at this. I'm going to ask you in the name of Jesus to share your good things, your substance with me. Apostle Victor James. AVJ. You know, men who deceive people, they don't, they don't apologize. They come with deception, looking like sheep, but they are wolves. You know, just to milk the people. No, but those of us who are called genuinely by God and are running with the mandate of making Jesus known, bringing the undiluted truth of the gospel to our generation, you sh we should be supported. We should be assisted. Amen. Right now, like I said, I'm going to be bold. I'm going to ask for 300 people to give right now in the name of Jesus. 300 people. I'm going to ask you to give. Look, the Lord might even ask you to give 10 million naira right now. Or 20 million naira. Or 5 million. Or just 1 million. Or 500,000. Or 100,000. Or 50,000. Or 20,000, or 10,000, or 5,000. Get involved. 300 people. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You know, you might be in America or Canada or London or, or, or anywhere in Europe, or Australia, Qatar, Dubai, Turkey, wherever you are. The Lord can use you to give $50,000, $100,000. $20,000, $10,000, $5,000, $1,000. Let the Lord use you. Be a part of, connect to this truth. Look, don't allow this Christmas to pass without you doing good. But the Bible said, especially to the man or woman who has truly labored in preaching and teaching the word of God. That's what we have done over these years. If all you have been following us is just this year, check all our teachings. You will see that the Lord sent us your way. 
And if Jesus did, if he did, not out of, we're not asking you to do it out of pressure. We're asking you to give. Christmas is just the next one week. That means between now and the next one week, let the Lord use you to be a blessing. Send something. Send love gift. Send your Christmas gift. Send your gift of goodness to Apostle Victor James. You can use Zenith Bank. Zenith Bank. And the account number is 1001-488-167. I'm going to say that again. Zenith Bank. 1001-488-167. One six seven, and then those of you in, from abroad, whether you are from Canada, London, America, wherever you are, all over the world, you, you know that you want to send, you can use uh, World Remit. Just go on Play Store, download World Remit, or you can download Send Wave. Send Wave. You can use it to send the same thing. You know, you can need to send money to us in uh, send us love your love gift wherever you are all over the world. You know, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and they are going to put the dollar account for you to see right there. They are going to put it there, GT Bank. You know, they are going to put it there. Every one of my sons and daughters, friends, and even my enemies, wherever you are all over the world, whether you are in Nigeria, you are in Lagos, everywhere, wherever you are, I am asking everybody to send a love offering, a Christmas gift to me. I'm going to be very bold. Send a Christmas gift to us. Send it to us. You know, encourage us. Let us know that what God is using us to do is a blessing to you. Wherever you are, do it. Go ahead. 300 people right now. Christmas is in the next one week. Between now and one week, Christmas time, I'm expecting to hear from you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm talking to you from my soul. From my heart of heart. This is me. I have nothing to pretend about. You know, I have nothing to pretend about. If we've been a blessing to you, directly or indirectly, I dare you to do good towards us. Even as Christmas approaches. In Jesus' precious name. Alright? Thank you so much. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you for these 300 men and women that you have released in their heart to send their Christmas love gift to us. I receive those gifts as a servant of God. The Bible said anybody who will give to your servant a cup of water just because he's a servant of God will receive the blessing of a servant of God. In Jesus name. Amen. If you're a pastor, you're a deacon, a deaconess, an elder, a departmental leader, a businessman, a businesswoman, an office worker, a nurse, a military man, a police officer, whatever it is you do, a lawyer, an architect, whatever it is, whatever your profession, if our teachings and ministries has been a blessing to you this year, right now, before one week time, that's Christmas time, send us, send me, not, I'm not going to say send us, send me a Christmas love gift christmas love offering and please remember we did say zenith bank one zero zero one four eight eight one six seven and it's victor james and then if you want to send from abroad you can use world remit or send wave you can get download that from play store and then you will see we are going to put right on the comment section, uh, section uh, the GT Bank you can use as well for dollar. You know, I love you and God bless you in Jesus' name. This is AVG. We're in the season that Jesus came to characterize for us, you know, show himself as an example. It is the season of doing good. Do good. Go extra mile to do good. Go the extra mile to do good. And I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ will meet you, you know, at the point of good yourself, in Jesus' name. I love you and God bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Until I see you on the next episode, this is AVJ, Apostle Victor James. And guess what? I am, woo, signing out. God bless you. Bye-bye.